two, I've got two questions that are related, and uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on what you saw from uh, Jesus Ferreira today, especially the detailed things that he did that uh, you know maybe don't get noticed all the time. And um, what does he have to do? This is a team that's been looking for a number nine who can be a regular number nine. What does he have to do to be in that uh, position? And what has been the biggest challenge in trying to find a number nine for this team? Yeah, I think, I think as a staff, I think we all see and appreciate what you said at the beginning in terms of his intelligence, his game intelligence. Um, he's a player that really understands um, how we want to play. Um, he's, a, he, he's a good player, he's still very young. Um, and I think in this camp, um, I think, and it's probably the same for quite a few players, well, the, a large majority of the players. I think Jesus is in this same group of players that are, f you know, physically, this is pre still pre-season for him. So um, where tonight um, we saw some really good signs from him, we also know that he, you know, he, ne he needs to get a few more games under his belt and, and, and start the season strong. Yeah, I think I think you know over the last year or two, there's been moments where there's players we've been looking at, and then they've had injuries. Um, you know, I think it, uh, if we look at as of today, um, or the objective of this camp was to look for new players, and I think we've you know Brandon Vasquez is someone that's done really really well. Um, you know, we had to manage his minutes as well, like we did a uh, you know all the other players. Um, but he's someone that we would like to see more of. Um, you've got players now overseas, you know, Daryl DK is coming back. I mean, there, there, are, there are now players that are back to fitness that, um, that will add comp competition to that position, which is, which is going to help everyone. Andrea. Anthony, what did you see in this camp that made you give Paxton Aronson uh, his uh, a start for his international debut, and um, did you see what you wanted to see from him tonight? And finally, have you given him any advice on what to work on when he goes back to Germany? Um, yeah, well, I think we, we've monitored him for a while. We have uh, a very close relationship with the youth national teams. We watch um, what, you know, what they're doing and, and follow the team. Uh, we had, you know, we've had camps with them in the past, and and Paxton's someone that we really, um, he's a high potential young player. Um, he has a lot of quality. Um, he's a he's a he's a bright young player, and and we uh, we want to support him. And this was a this was a camp for a t for this re very reason to look at players like this, to look at players like Paxton. Um, I thought he did well tonight. You know, I thought it was a tough game. I thought it was a very physical game. I thought it was a, a game of you know a lot of transition moments, um, which means in in the, especially in midfield in transition you need physicality and there's a lot of quick and physical players in there. But he never gave up; like he kept going, um, and he had some really good moments um, in the game. And then with regards to uh, advice, I haven't had enough time to speak to him yet about what he needs to work on to go back with. But we were pleased with him. He's, we were pleased with him. He's a good young player. We want to help him, and he needs to just keep working hard, working at his game. Paxson, one of 12 players to make their debut, debut during this January camp, a record for this period of time. The previous high mark for debuts during matches prior to the start of the MLS season it was eight. It was across three games in 2006. We'll go to Stephen Goff from the Washington Post. Along those lines of what Michael was saying, um, big picture, uh, he came into this camp with a lot of young guys looking for first caps, and obviously all but one got it, a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, uh, happy with that? Pleased with that? Uh, did you get to, Did you get what you wanted out of this camp aside from aside from a victory? Yeah. Overall, I think we we achieved our objectives. We. You know, there's a bunch of players in there that we wanted to see. We wanted to see with us. We wanted to see in competitive games. Um, so, and that's given us the opportunity to do that. And, and you know, there's, I, I, I don't want to go through the individual names because there's, you know, it wouldn't be fair on the rest of the group. Um, obviously, one of those players left halfway through the window, which was another bonus for us to, to get to see uh, Zen, Zendejas. Um, so yeah, so it, w it was a case of being able to uh, 
um, look at these players in our environment and then also balance in that with being able to get through two games physically um, with the amount of players that can play 90 minutes um, because we know that this is not a typical January window where you can have time to build your fitness for these games. So the, object the objective to was to look at players, give players a chance, players that we've been monitoring, and then also be able to balance the group so we can get through the two games. Simon. Thanks, Anthony. Another specific player I wanted to ask about is uh, John Tolkien. How do you think he did tonight, uh, especially defensively? A lot of defensive work to do. Um, how do you think he held up? And then looking ahead to March, uh, have Zendejas and Brandon Vasquez done enough to be called up uh, with the full team? Where do you think they stand in terms of the the overall pool and what does that look like for them? Because they obviously might have a decision to make soon. What, what's that conversation yeah. going to be like? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good question, the second part. I mean, uh, the, uh, with Jonathan Tolkien, I think I said this the other day in, in the press conference, like, he, he, first of all, I love him around the place. I love him in camp. He's just got such a big personality. Um, and then you see his personality on the field. You know, he's incredibly brave. Um, he's an aggressive player. He's a physical player. Um, you know, he, I don't think this situation phased him at all. You know, he embraced, he embraces um, everything. He's, he's a very confident kid. So he's one that um, we're glad we've seen because he's impressed us before when he's been um, in our pre-World Cup camp. So he's impressed us before. We, we're glad we've seen him. And uh, and we're going to, yeah, he's, he's, he's now someone that's um, in, our, in our group of players. Uh, with regards to March, um, look, we, we, I think when we get back um, and we start uh, preparing the squad for March, it will be a lot clearer. But all I can say on Brandon and um, Alejandro is, uh, for me personally, uh, I thought they were both very, very good. Um, uh, Alejandro in the last game I thought was excellent. He was great in training. Um, we loved having him in camp, good character, enjoyed being here. And the same with Brandon. Well, I've really enjoyed working with him. So um, they've, they're, they're, they're two players that are well and truly uh, going to be in our conversations when we get back to Chicago. Yeah. Anthony, um, Matthew Hoppe is he, one of those players who's kind of in an, in an awkward spot. I mean, he's not really getting much in the way of minutes with his club, uh, but he has played with the national team before, you know, what, given the circumstances with, under which he's operating, you know, how did you think he did tonight? Look, it's, it's exactly what you said, Jeff. Like, Matt's, Matt's in a, it's not easy when you're not playing first team football for your club and moving to a new club. And um, first of all, we were so pleased to get him in this window. I think it's probably, it's good for us to see him and I think it's been good for him just to get a, a change of scenery and also uh, games. Um, I, can, I can tell you this, I mean, we, we were getting information late in the game and unfortunately we couldn't make any more changes because we'd already had assigned changes for physical reasons. But Matt was one of the players that um, was struggling to play 90 minutes. Um, and I think he was struggling to play 90 minutes because he played at such a high intensity in that game. I mean, he, uh, what, what I love about Matt is um, he just never gives up on anything. You know, he, he, he must, I would imagine for, de for defenders, he's horrible to play against because he just doesn't stop going. He chases down lost causes. Um, he's tenacious. He's direct. Um, and, and he did all that tonight, having not played, you know, he's played games, but under 21 games. He's not played official, competitive, you know, games that, that, means, that, that mean something. So, um, yeah, Matt, Matt has had a really good camp. He came in late. He's done really, really well. We're, I'm pleased with it, pleased for him and, and, and pleased with him. Fernando. Yes, how are you doing, Coach? Um, I'm sorry to look a little bit into the future, but it was huge news that Copa America is coming back to the U.S. and, uh, and that mix between CONCACAF and CONMEBOL. What's your opinion? I think it's great news. I think, um, I think where where the program is at the moment in terms of um, what's been done over the last four years. The, the, the team um, have had very lofty ambitions and we've worked towards um, you know, a goal of um, changing our identity, 
of how we play, and I feel we've done that. Um, we had to, you know, way back four years ago, had to change the squad, because you know, w w due to the age of the squad, there needed to be change. Um, I feel we've done that. We now have a really young, exciting group of players, um, and that all culminated with, you know, a, a couple of gold medals, um, you know, qualifying for the World Cup, and then and then a really good showing at the World Cup. So I think for for the states as a country. Um, the national team is improving, it's, it's trending in the right way. Um, and then also soccer in this country is growing so quickly. And it's, um, and it's everyone outside of the country is recognizing that. They see new clubs come, you know, coming into MLS, the stadiums, the facilities, the crowds, the, the, the passion of the fans. So everything is moving in the right direction. And then to get this news about the Copa America is just amazing news. And I think it's just another another thing that's just going to give the country a big lit, big lift and help the sport grow in this country. Damien. Hey, Anthony. Uh, the other day you said this game would be a, a different test than Serbia. Um, it didn't seem like a your normal January friendly, but how did that sort of play out in your eyes down on, on the field? It did, and I think we said it would be like this type of game in terms of transitions and a quicker game. and. Um, you like you could probably the way I saw it from the touchline, it, it could easily have been a qualifying game. Look, uh, such was what the players were putting it. Both teams were putting into it. Um, it was a very intense game. Um, I don't think there was any moments in the game where the game just went very slow and calm. So it was a very, uh, it was a game full of transition. It was a quick game. Um, I felt in the in the first half, there was probably a lot more back and forward and transition, and we changed a few things at halftime just to get a little bit more stability. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really good test for our players, and especially some of the younger guys that we mentioned. This is this will be great for great experience for them. Anthony, how's it going? Uh, just with a little bit of uh, about the uncertainty about you know the federation and the team. For you personally, what's next as you look forward to the Concacaf? Nations League, maybe the construction of that roster, maybe a different approach. What's next, uh, personally, for you? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think in the last uh, press conference, I'm, I'm, you know, we get back to Chicago. My, my focus, until I'm told otherwise, I'm going to do my very best for the team, for the players. Um, I really feel um, privileged to have been part of the last four years. Um, you know, we've just had a, a, a talk in the locker room. We've got an amazing group of players, like the, you know, and a large number of the players are not here. But I can assure you, uh, the players love playing for this team. They love coming to represent the national team, and to work with a group of players like that is a real privilege. So, um, my where I feel I'm at, my responsibility. Until I'm told otherwise, I'm going to do all I can to help the players help try and improve the team, help try and take the style of play forward, um, help the staff. I just want to, we, we just want to keep improving things. So that's where my focus is um, going forward. 